very thankful for that opportunity because I was very close to giving up football. I started an apprenticeship and I was a very late bloomer compared to some players that are signing contracts at 17, 18. <music> Yeah, honestly, I would say this is probably my home away from home now. Obviously, the longest time I've actually played in my career is in Japan now. Um, you know, I've obviously had uh, many, many games in Australia, but I don't know exactly my appearance count here in Japan, but yeah, it's on my seventh year is, you know, a big chunk of my career and I'm loving it. Cup. I had a lot of opportunities elsewhere um, and there was a big motivation for me to actually go back to England to where uh, my two kids there are living. I had a lot of championship clubs after me and I was actually doing some negotiations there to be honest. Um, just purely based on being there close to the family but um, you know for me I'm 32 now and my priorities and you know, coming to the back end of my career, I'm trying to like prioritize, you know, when I retire, make sure I'm comfortable and financially well off, you know, for, for my family's future as well. So the financial aspect was the main factor and the championship clubs that were coming in for me just didn't match to what I was getting here. And, you know, and for me, I wasn't gonna change that unless it was gonna be, you know, wealthy enough, I guess, to, to make that decision. Oh, I could say that came from a very, very young age, um, especially from my father, who was very much a grafter, grinded out. Uh, you know, he was supplying life for nine kids, to be honest. So he was working hard to, to look after nine kids. Um, you know, he was the main breadwinner as well. So he was literally just that old school Aussie hard worker. Um, you know, just worked everything paycheck to ch uh, paycheck to paycheck, and uh, you know, for me. He also instilled that in me in a young age. He said that kind of if you wanted to make as a footballer, I think when I was like from the age of 10 or 11, he made me wake up before he went to work, make sure I'd do 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, uh, you know, and like instilled that little bit of like, you know, you can't slack off kind of thing, early doors. And, uh, you know, I'm very thankful for him instilling that in me because I feel like that's made me kind of put that in my football. And, you know, uh, he kind of always said as well, hard, week and, hard work can beat talent. And I truly believe that if you work harder than the other person, it doesn't matter how good they are, you can overrun them. And, you know, unfortunately, it's sometimes you, you develop a bit of a stigma and, or like a stereotype from people and they start to think, oh, this guy can just run and ch to chase a ball, but, you know, and, and lose the aspect of like, you know, he's actually a decent enough footballer. Um, because, yeah, I think a lot of people just be like, oh, this guy just runs, he can't do anything else and, and, and things like that. But I think, Finally, after the World Cup, I think some people started to realise, you know, that was balanced out with some, you know, quality football as well that I could show. And it was nice to kind of earn that little bit of respect as, as long as it kind of took me. Through my career, I've actually played so many different positions. You know, my first four years when I came to Japan, I was actually a wing back and a winger. Um, it wasn't until I went back from Japan to the Wanderers that I kind of showed myself completely as a striker, um, showed that I can also be prolific when given the opportunity, you know, adding in my hard work with goals, um, which was kind of always what I wanted to do. And since then, I feel like I've, I've only grown um, to another level and earned that respect as a striker instead of just a runner, hard worker, um, and in a different position. So for me, yeah, like I'm buzzing now. It's kind of taken me to this point, it has been frustrating because I unfortunately can see comments on social media where, you know, even, even around the Socceroos as a whole going to the World Cup, so many people were saying this is the worst Socceroos team to ever go to a World Cup and look what happened, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we, we shut a lot of people up, I think, and, and proved a lot of people wrong um, to end up having the best World Cup campaign in history. So, um, you know, we'll take that. And, you know, you, I think you've got to use that as motivation as well, um, you know, back against the wall, that Aussie DNA, prove people wrong. And as long as you've got a tight-knit circle, you can do anything. And the only people's opinion that matter are the people that get to choose the team. And if they back you and they give you enough confidence, then, you know, you want to prove them right instead of the people that are, like, uh, bad-talking you, I guess. 
in that sense. And I, you use that as motivation, of course, to, you know, you always want to prove your doubters wrong. And I think, well, everyone did that in, during the World Cup. Oh, massive. Um, very grateful for Graham Arnold for, you know, he yeah, gave me my first pro contract, gave me my first opportunity as a professional, um, gave me a lot of confidence as a player um, and, you know, very thankful for that opportunity because I was very close to giving up football. Um, I started an apprenticeship and I was a very late bloomer compared to some players that are signing contracts at 17, 18. I didn't sign my first pro deal till I was 21. Um, so I was on the back end and, and ready to give up and so grateful he gave me that chance because now, <laughs> look where I am, I've, I've been able to play in the Olympics, um, the World Cup, you know, scored a goal at the World Cup, and I can look back at my career from today's date and still be very proud. So, and, and he has a major part to that, and I think that's what helped me as well. I really wanted to repay his belief and his faith in me as a player, and I think I was able to do that pretty well in the World Cup for him. He also had his fair share of doubters and, and haters, I guess you could say, um, you know, we went the hard way. Obviously, we had to beat Peru and, and everything and the way we've done it. Um, I think from that Peru time, then, it kind of like reignited some people's belief, I guess, in us. And, you know, after the World Cup campaign, um, I think the world was his oyster after that with choices. And I think a big part of that is what he's built already within the team, the family environment. I think that's probably what's kept him on um, because I'm sure he would have had a fair share of clubs and everything else after him. But... And I was like, yeah, I think I thought he was missing club football as well, so I'm surprised he did stay on, but very happy because I think he's got big things planned and I think he's going to have a big Asian Cup coming up in a year's time. Craig Goodwin takes a deflection on target! And Mitch Duke becomes the Socceroos' eighth individual goal scorer in a World Cup, Cup Finals match. Yeah, I was number eight and Lecky was number nine. Um, Honestly, like, thinking about it like that is still insane. Like, just to be a part of such a small group there is super special. Um, just the way, you know, adding into the campaign that it was adds in that little bit more special. Uh, the goal that I scored, being able to share it with my son, um, him giving me that celebration and having that special moment, like, all these little things just grew into, like, this. that moment itself is the biggest highlight of my career up to date. Um, just for all those reasons and uh, especially the thing I'm actually going to get a tattoo of my son's celebration on my arm for it and it was actually really hard to re recover after the World Cup you know it's, it was almost like a hangover from the amazing camp campaign that we had um, but honestly like I would love to score another goal at a World Cup it's very <laughs> the best feeling in the world I love that he kind of stole the show um, from me uh, he was getting so many messages. He had like news crews and stuff uh, messaging like uh, my former partner and everything like that and you know trying to get interviews with him like just with a six-year-old and to be fair he stood his ground brilliantly. He didn't interview himself, um, held his ground perfectly, spoke really well and then when he went back to school he was, a, he was a superstar, he was the king. When I saw him back after the World Cup campaign as well for the first time I was sending him to bed and he's like, Daddy, I'm famous. Uh, he was just, he was absolutely lapping it up and he, he loved it. I loved it. His next show and tell at school, I was able to take in some of the jerseys that I got from the World Cup, uh, my man of the match trophy that I was able to take. And just, he kept gr growing in stature at his school and uh, it was brilliant. Unfortunately, I didn't get a France jersey. I'm really upset about that, but all the boys got in early doors. I wanted Giroud's jersey, but Irvine got his. Um, and then all the other boys like Griezmann, like Goody got his. And I was like, I, start, I stopped asking because I was like looking like a mug because I asked about four players and they're like, sorry, man, we've already given, like, promised my jersey to someone else. And I'm like, right, I'll just give up. Um, and so I was like making sure. I didn't get anyone from Tunisia either, but uh, I got Braithwaite from Denmark and I got Messi's jersey. He had, he had a spare one, thankfully, because I did drug testing with him after the game, actually. And I was sitting in a room with him for about an hour and a half, just kind of starstruck after the game. Um, unfortunately, what he just done to us as well. But he was one person that I've, I've idolised massive. You know, for me, I see him as the greatest footballer of all time. Um, and for him to just be sitting right across from me, I was sending like pictures of him, <laughs> little, little sneaky pictures of him while he's just sitting there next to like a bin and like all these waters that we're trying to drink before we have to do our drug test. And it was just surreal. You know, this, this guy's just sitting in front of me, and I, I had to beg him for. I know he'd given already his jersey away to Cammy Devlin. 
And I was like, I know we get two, three, sometimes four jerseys in, on a match day. So I was like, I know he had spares. And I made sure to get one of those. And unfortunately, he actually said no at the beginning. And then when I'd come back to the change room, our, our kit, one of our kit men had, had one for me waiting. And I was like, absolutely over the moon. So that's going up in a frame in my man cave in the future for sure. It can be actually like quite a mental test because uh, you go from such a high back down to reality and such like, you know, yeah, like just sitting on the couch and just doing like standard normal things when you're in like constantly in the hype of what the World Cup was. You know, we were obviously buzzing as well because like it was a successful campaign. Um, you know, when, after that first win, we wanted that next win. And like just the euphoria of emotions and everything like that, it was intense. It was intense. So to come back to reality was, for, for me, it took a good like four or five weeks. I mean, I was lucky enough where I kind of had a holiday and I, I was able to kind of like kick on and like celebrate what we had just done other than boys being like, you know, straight back to club football and they had to switch back on to just focusing on that without letting that affect their game too much as well. Um, yeah, but it's insane and, and the experience of a lifetime. We backed ourselves, we, we had that feeling that we were gonna like do something special before the like, first whistle of the first game. Um, but for it to go that quickly against, you know, former champions and, and everything like that uh, was insane. And I think it was just like, yeah, it was just unbelievable. It, it seemed surreal, Goody scoring the goal. It didn't seem real at the time. I was running over kind of like, did we just do that? Like, <laughs> but honestly, it was, it was insane. Um, unfortunately, we didn't hold on, but you know, I think we, we were able to take some confidence away from that, doing that against the, the former champions. France were just different gravy. Um, great experience to play against world superstars like them. And, uh, you know, we took that as our kind of, like the way Arnie said it was perfect. He kind of said it was like, that's our training match. That was our preparation for the remaining two games. And I think that was, that set the platform for us, even though it was a loss, but it honestly like, helped us get those two wins afterwards. Yeah, I went back to England uh, to spend time with my kids. I was lucky enough to fly um, my two little ones from England to the World Cup to experience that, which was really special. Um, and then I had 10 days back in Australia. And thankfully, because it was the off season of Japan, so I was able to kind of take my time, enjoy, yeah, what we just experienced and, and things like that. And it was a good five week break uh, before getting back to business here. And uh, January was a pretty stressful time because like I said, I was in the midst of deciding if I was gonna come back to Japan or stay in England and, and work things out that way because it's, it's such a hard balance, uh, especially when you're trying to balance family, football, future, um, and things like that. And you've got to try and prioritize things, kind of get and put like a clear thing on it. Um, you know, I'm, I don't regret my decision. It's tough missing time away from kids. Uh, it's just part of the sacrifice and you've got to see the long-term, I guess, goal of what you're doing it for. And, you know, they're going to understand in the future when they're going to have a house each or something to, you know, be comfortable for their futures. And uh, that's the way I've got to keep looking at it to make, make it easy because it is tough being here on your own. Um, and then, you know, missing the time with your kids, seeing them grow up. But, you know, it's all for a cause. Oh, I think in football, every footballer can say at some point they're missing massive milestones, whether or not that's anniversaries, birthdays, weddings, siblings, like, sit like big milestones for your family. Um, you know, I've unfortunately missed so many of my sister's weddings, uh, massive birthdays, uh, and massive events like that in general. You know, I've missed both my kids' births in England. Um, also, I've got a son in Australia. And I've lost so much time uh, because of football and, you know, trying to balance it out. And it, it's such a short time um, that you've got to make as much money, I guess, as you can to be comfortable for when you retire because you're retired a hell of a lot longer than you're playing. So, you know, that's the mentality you've got to have. And uh, like I said, you've got to have that image where it's all for a cause and not let it affect you too much. Otherwise, you go into a shell when you're overseas and that's why maybe some people struggle and they're like, you know what, I miss the family network. I need to go back home, be close to my friends and family. So... Lucky enough, I've been strong enough to handle six plus years here in Japan and a, a seven month stint in Saudi. So uh, it's all been a part of the, part of the journey. It's, I don't regret any of it. I signed a two year deal in Saudi, but after a few months, I'd went there after one of my best seasons with the Wanderers scoring like 14 and 26 as a striker. And then I've turned up to Saudi and I feel like they didn't respect me enough. They put me as a winger um, and I was a few games in, didn't score any goals. And I said to them, basically, I'm not happy. I want to be playing as a striker. If you're not, like, put me on the bench. And they basically said, if you're not happy, leave. And I wasn't happy. I wasn't enjoying the lifestyle there either. So that was one. I mean, like I said, though, like, that I, feel, I see that as a positive experience because I learned a lot from that. And knowing 
knowing your worth as a footballer, knowing who you are, um, what position you want to play. And I was at that stage where I kind of backed myself being like, you know what, I have the right to say, this is my position, I want to play here. And if you don't respect that, then okay, I will leave. And, you know, I, I learned a lot from that situation, which was brilliant. And yeah, and that's why also when I was going back overseas, Japan was a big factor in that because I know I love the life here. Yeah, huge ambition, uh, part of the reason why I've come to here. Um, also the lifestyle as well. I was, I was in Okayama for a year and a half. Um, we, did, we had one of their best seasons in their history. We finished third, which is the highest they've ever finished up and into the playoffs and we did really well. Um, and now they were selling that to me as well, being like we were, we've brought in new, 19 new players, a whole new staff. Uh, they've built only a new clubhouse and, and training facilities here, only a year old. Um, so loads of investment and the ambition is J1, uh, to get promoted to J1 and be the J2 champions. So finish top of the table um, and they won't really want to accept anything less. So I'm excited about that. Um, you know, I'm spearheading that, uh, being the striker. Um, we've had a good start so far. We've had a nil or draw in the first round and a 2 nil win in the second round. Um, so two clean sheets, four points. It's a good start and we're just going to build on that. And I believe we've definitely got the team to do it. And I have big and individual goals myself. I want to get the golden boot here in Japan. Um, like I said, it's, a, it's, it's special. It's a home away from home here. For me, I've even got it tattooed on my skin. I've got temples and cherry blossoms and all that on my skin now. Uh, I've got a huge respect for here in Japan. And, uh, you know, I want to build a name here. Um, you know, and I think it helps other Aussies. If you, Aussies are doing well abroad, that country will respect that, that nation and, and probably want to bring in more. So, you know, we're still representing Australia being Aussies here in, in another league. Did you enjoy that? There's so much more. So why not hit subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.